بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله مولانا العظيم والصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى عليك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters Alhamdulillah the last 10 days of Ramadan are approaching fast and as we know that the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us to seek shab qadr in the last 10 days, amongst the ordinance of the last 10 days, we all know the virtues and excellences of shab qadr But today I want to bring to you a surah which has been dedicated entirely by Allah Ta'ala in the Qur'an to this blessed night. Many of us, they know the translation of this surah, but inshallah what I want to bring to you is word by word analysis so that we can bring about the hidden meaning and we can actually find out how Allah Ta'ala introduces this night to us. So let's get started. Allah Ta'ala starts off by saying, Inna. The very first word, tells us a lot about this night. Allah Ta'ala sometimes uses inni, that is indeed I, and sometimes uses inna, indeed we. So what is the difference? Why sometimes inni and why sometimes inna? Inni is used in the Quran by Allah Ta'ala when Allah Ta'ala wants to make a personal statement. Like for example, if Allah Ta'ala is saying, I will reward you, if you do this, or I will punish you. So it's more on an individual personal level. But when Allah Ta'ala wants to make a grand statement, a sort of a royal statement, add some majesty to it, Allah Ta'ala uses inna. Indeed, we. Like for example, in Surah al kawsar Allah Ta'ala states, inna a'toyna kal kawsar here Allah Ta'ala is explaining or telling us about the great blessing of al kawsar given to his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so Allah Ta'ala says Inna, indeed we gave you the kawsar O beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so here just by saying Inna Allah Ta'ala is adding some majesty to it that this night is indeed great because we are the ones who are Anzalna. Anzalna, as we commonly translate in English, is reveal. Now there are two words used in the Quran for revelation. Nazalna, Anzalna. Allah Ta'ala sometimes uses Nazalna and sometimes uses Anzalna. So what is the difference? Mostly for Quran, Nazalna is used. We know that the Qur'an was revealed in Tadrij, that is, gradually, bit by bit, whenever it was needed, the revelation came down. And this is only for this book. Allah Ta'ala uses the word Anzalna for the previous books, where the books came down at once. The Torah came down at once, the Injil came down at once, the entire book would be revealed at one go or in one go. But the Quran was revealed bit by bit. So Allah uses Nazalna for the Quran, Anzalna for the other books. But here, interestingly, Allah Ta'ala is using Anzalna for the Quran. That means the entire Quran is being revealed in one go. So where and how is that happening? The Mufassirun say that in this night, the entire Qur'an is revealed from the Lohe Mehfuz to the skies. So it is a one-time revelation. And then from there, 
from the skies, Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu taslim would bring it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the form of a wahi, so that would be nazzalna. But what was revealed in this night is anzalna, so indeed we have revealed. What? Allah Ta'ala uses, very interestingly, just a pronoun, who? Indeed, we revealed it. Allah Ta'ala does not even use the word Qur'an. Even though this night is for the revelation of the Qur'an, but Qur'an is not mentioned. Why is it so? The reason is that there were two addresses to uh, the revelation. One were the Muslims and one were the non-Muslims. For the Muslims, the Qur'an was so central to their life. Because so many revelations had come before, this is the 25th surah in terms of revelation. So about 24 surahs have been revealed before. And Qur'an had become such a central point of the life of the Sahaba that Allah Ta'ala did not even have to say Qur'an just by saying we have revealed it made it clear for the Sahaba that Allah Ta'ala is talking about the Qur'an. And also for the non-believers too, they would be interested to listen to the wahi, to see what Allah Ta'ala is revealing next because they were extensively mentioned, they were addressed directly in the Qur'an too or indirectly through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even for them just by saying we have revealed it, would be without any doubt the Quran. So now Allah Ta'ala is saying, indeed we revealed it. Fi in Laylatil Qadr. Layla, as we know, is night. Qadr is commonly translated as power, which is fine, but there is no word in the English or Urdu language which can capture the entire meaning of the word Qadr. And that is why Imam Ahl Sunnah, Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullah just uses Qadr for it, not translating the Qadr bit. He uses Qadr because Qadr in Arabic has so many meanings embedded in it. I'll give you some of them. One meaning of Qadr is dignity nobility this night is dignified why because the quran is revealed some say that the night was dignified even before that but it increased its dignity because of the quran so this night is dignified by the quran and whoever worships in this night is dignified by it <clears throat> so this is a night which is dignified and which also dignifies that is one meaning, nobility. The other meaning is appreciation. In this night, if a person worships, he is appreciated. We know that the worship counts a lot in this night. So appreciation, that is another meaning. The third meaning is estimation. Qadr is also estimation. In this night, as we have heard about Laylatul Bara'a, or the Shabi Barat as we call it, that in this night, also, the angels are given their respective tasks. So their duties about an individual, about their life, about the death, about the sustenance, that is given. So it's like a measure, an estimation, that is also called Qadr, because it happens in this night. So it's called Shabi Qadr. And the last meaning, which I'm going to give you, and is the most interesting one, is that Qadr means when something becomes tight, when the space becomes tight, or when, you know, for some people the sustenance becomes tight, the situation becomes tight, they say Qadr. Now, this night is called Shab e Qadr because so many angels come down to the earth on this night that there is congestion. There's like traffic, congestion on earth because of the sheer amount of angels coming down. This is also one of the reasons why it is called Shabi Qadr. So, Inna anzalna hufi laylatil qadr. Wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. Now, Allah Ta'ala is asking this question. He's like, it's a, it's a uh, ta'ajjub. Like, 
what would make you know about shab e qadr the shab e qadr is so unprecedented that oh people whatever you have witnessed so far cannot give you the slightest indication of shab e qadr this is what shab e qadr is what would you know how would you know about shab e qadr laylatul qadr khairum min al fishar now allah is saying let me tell you about shab e qadr but before we go to that it's interesting to know that allah taala used the word laylatul qadr three times three times in three short ayat now this again is also unprecedented allah taala does not repeat the words in the quran sometimes it's only mentioned once that is important enough sometimes twice to lay more emphasis on it but this is the only instance in the quran where a word is repeated three times just to show the significance that allah taala is not using a dhamir or a proverb for it a pronoun for it but allah taala is using the same word laylatul qadr again and again three times so now allah taala tells us what is shab e qadr laylatul qadr khairum min alf shahr that it is better than a thousand months now in what sense you know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was worried about the fact that the average age of this ummah is about 60 to 70 years people before lived a lot longer they used to live for hundreds of years and they would worship so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam thought that they would have a lot more ibadat they would do a lot more ibadat they would have a lot more reward so to calm the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to comfort him allah taala gave such nice to his ummah that in it if they worship then allah taala would give them a reward of a lifetime like if you think about it a thousand months itself is like about 83 years and 4 months if i got that right okay 83 years that means if you worship in this one night you get more reward than you would be worshiping your entire life and that is just one shab e qadr if you get 50 shab e qadr may allah give us plenty of them If you get 20, 30, whatever, can you imagine the reward? So great reward by worshiping in this night. Also, a thousand months could be to mean a very long time. Not necessarily, you know, counting to a thousand, but meaning a very long time. Because the Arabs used to use this phrase a thousand months for a long time. So Allah Taala used the same phrase because it was addressing. the arabs also interestingly they say that the highest numeric value in uh, arabic is alf which is a thousand okay there is nothing higher than that if you want a higher figure a higher value you need to multiply alf and mia and alf and mia 1000 100 1000 that's how you get a bigger figure but a single figure which is highest is they say alf and so allah is saying You know the greatest the largest number of months you can think of this one night's worship is better than all those subhanallah so worship the other thing is that the khair the goodness the barakah the blessings in this night is more than a thousand months is more than you could receive in a thousand months laylatul qadr khairum min alf shahr what other things happen in this night allah taala continues tanazzalul malaikatu والروح فيها باذن ربهم من كل امر now we know the angels they worship in the skies they worship under the arsh they worship near the kursi of allah they are worshiping in high places i mean people worshiping on the earth they might mean not much to them but there is something in this night where the angels they seek permission from allah to come down to the earth they want to come down to the earth tonight why because ummat mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam is worshiping and allah taala has given them an incredible night so the angels want to come and greet us so they actually take permission from allah taala and with the permission of allah all the angels they leave their places up there where they are worshiping they come down what do they do when they come down they go to each and every person who is worshiping each and every person in their house in the mosque wherever they are 
they visit each and every one of them and they greet them. They greet each and every one of them, subhanAllah. So incredible. Along with this, something even more special happens. The angels don't come alone. Somebody else comes with them. Whom Allah Ta'ala is mentioning as Ar-Ruh. Ar-Ruh is the one who only would come for some big jobs. Like if the azab of Allah was to be revealed or if some good news were to be given to a community, to a Nabi, then he would come. Or he would come with the wahi, the message of Allah to the messengers, to the prophets. He last came to the Prophet ﷺ with the wahi. This is Jibreel Amin taslim, the leader of all the angels. He does not need to come down to the earth all the time now. But he comes once a year to meet and greet the Ummah of the Beloved Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. He is coming down. Jibreel Amin Alayhi Salatu Salaam himself is coming down. And they say that when he comes down, those few lucky ones, he also shake hands with them. He does musafaha with them. And the feeling that they get, they, they sort of know that this has happened. So the angels are coming down. Ruhul Amin alayhi salatu taslim is coming down. They go to each one of them. They greet them. And we can say that the angels are coming to receive the honor from the worship of the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu And Jibreel Amin alayhi salam is coming to give the honor by his presence to those people who are worshipping. Min kulli amr. They come with all the tasks that are assigned to them. So along with this, they also know what tasks they have to do for the entire year for an individual, what is going to happen, he's going to live, he's going to die, how much he's going to earn, he's going to be sick, he's going to be healthy, whatever. All this is also being assigned. Salam. There is total peace. They say that every night has three parts. The first part is when the shayateen, they spread on the earth which is like a chaotic time that is straight after Maghrib then it is the time of ghafla where most people go to sleep people become heedless the third time or the third part is mercy rahmah where the chosen ones the pious ones the God fearing ones they wake up and they start worshipping their Lord three parts of every night even other than Ramadan. But in shab e qadr Allah Ta'ala lifts the first two parts. There is no shayateen. They are not there in Ramadan anyway. And there is no ghafla too. The entire night is covered with peace. The entire night is covered with blessing. There is no ghafla. There is no shayateen. There is only peace and mercy of Allah Ta'ala. Allah is saying, Salah, ultimate peace. There is no question of any punishment today. In other nights, there could be punishment, there could be reward, there could be mercy. But here, in this night, there is only peace. There is only blessings. Until the break of dawn. This keep ha keeps happening, it continues till the break of dawn. Now, if you notice that there are three things being revealed in this surah. Three things are coming down. The first, uh, the angels are coming down. Ruhul Amin is coming down. Second, Allah's mercy is coming down. And third, which is the most important, is the Quran is coming down in this night. Three things are descending in this night. And this entire setup, all this arrangement is to receive the Quran. And if you imagine, this night is so great, then how great is the Quran itself? If the night which receives the Quran is so great, how great is the Quran? And Alhamdulillah, that Qur'an is being received tonight, which is the night of Qadr. Now, 
again if we notice Allah Ta'ala did not talk about when is shab qadr Allah Ta'ala is saying what is shab qadr He is telling us what is shab qadr When is shab qadr is not the point We have been told by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to worship in the odd nights or to try and seek shab qadr in the last uh, five odd nights of Ramadan But Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he states that he has some indication that that night could be 27 though this cannot be taken as a shari dalil as a solid proof but just an indication I'm going to share with you he says that Laylatul Qadr has nine letters in it and it is mentioned three times and so nine times three is 27 an indication that it could be the 27th night also he says that there are 30 words in the entire surah and the 27th word is here is here that means referring to the night so it could be that 27th night is shab qadr wallahu ta'ala alam we don't need to fix it we need to worship in all the nights all the odd nights at least and all the other nights too in Ramadan at least the last 10 nights so that we can seek shab qadr it is stated those who try for something they will ultimately achieve it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us shab qadr and give us the complete blessings of shab qadr and maybe may we be one of those fortunate ones whom uh, you know Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu taslim shake hands with and we get the greetings of the angels may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the dua of ours and the entire ummah in this blessed night and accept all our duas and all the ibadat wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi wa rabbil alameen assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh